people side at the retailing side of the business um, just to give you a little training we have done this sort of many moons ago down in Maidstone um, just to go through some of the basics of the retailing side so retailing detail if you like so why should you retail well it's an immediate income of course straight away the team building side even if you've got um, designs on the team building side can take a little while to kick in and you can get that immediate uh, income from day one anything between 21 to 36 p in every uh, pound you receive in orders is paid back to you immediately approximately 21 pence out of every pound is what you get back and you'll get another um, basically an extra six to 15 pence added as a bonus at the end of a four week sales period what I'm going to do I'm just going to freeze the chat here as well so just bear with me for one second while I do that and uh, we'll obviously open up if we have a chance later on as well and also you can't teach what you don't know it's fine um, some people come in and they just want to do the team building side thinking well that's all where the money is but people will suss you out very very quickly on that trust me they will realize when um, they ask you questions that if you're not doing the retailing side that you know you can't teach them and so you'll lose credibility so it's really important that you're credible with your people and if you're not comfortable with your retailing side you're certainly not going to be comfortable with your sponsoring side because some people think I'll, I'll, I'll stay away from this because there's a few things I'm not quite sure or maybe they don't want to get their hands dirty well this business is not about people sitting in ivory towers directing other you know directing their team where to go it's about you doing a certain amount of showing other people how to do the same uh, both myself and Sue, we still retail on a regular basis. A little bit more on that later. Now, just some basics I want to run through with you. Uh, treat your business like a business. It's your own mobile shop. Too many people treat it as a part-time thing. Treat it and give it the respect it deserves. You know, you have, uh, in effect, a lot more products than most shops uh, have. You have 1,500 products. It is like your own mobile shop. So give it the respect it deserves rather than just this little part-time thing. Uh, really important to keep your catalogs tidy. It's your shop window. Some of you will have noticed if you've started putting your catalogs out. It, it, I know many of you are on the break free and maybe haven't got to this stage yet. But many would, would have noticed that the catalogs start getting a little tatty. Well, not the catalogs, the bag. They don't feel like they did the first time they went out after they've been out maybe two, three or four times. Uh, I would recommend to change the bags as they're actually, if they are getting a little tatty, a little worn, because it's just your first impression. It is like your shop window. I mean, how many of you would buy quality items or think there's quality items if that, you know, there was goods being sold out of a van, you know, like Dylan Rodney's from Only Fools and Horses. Um, probably not. You're probably not going to think it's quality, quality items. So make sure that your shop looks professional when it goes through people's doors, whether you're presenting them to people, certainly if you're presenting them to people, you're actually handing it to them, or you're just dropping it through the letterbox, of course. Here's, here's a good uh, tip for you. Smile at grumpy people. Has anybody, yeah, let me just ask a question here. I will open up the chat here. Has anybody here come across anybody that's grumpy on their travels? Maybe you can tell me. Maybe it's just me that comes across the odd, grumpy person out there. And um, you, <laughs> we all will do. You see, that's a reality. You're always going to find one or two that are like that out there. As somebody said a long time ago, there's only eight or nine really grumpy, nasty people in the world. So they just move, they move around a lot, <laughs> but there's only a few. So you can deal with them when you come across them. Has anybody delivered to people that look like this? And some of you, and this talk probably is getting a little dated, uh, Victor Meldrew and his wife, I think you know, some of you will probably pick it up on UK Gold or something like that. Um, but what I, you will always come across people that are going to be grumpy. You just have to deal with them. And smiling is the best uh, answer I can give you to this because if you've ever come across somebody that's, uh, I don't know, said, I'll oh, throw your catalogue away, and I'm sure you, you know the type. It's their job to get up and make everybody else's day a mis misery. There's always going to be some people like that. If you smile at them, it diffuses it, and slightly, if necessary, winds them up, because very often they're after an argument. Like I said, there really isn't that many people out there like that. I would say you probably find about one in 200 who are a little bit groan, uh, moany and groany, and they're that type of person. The great thing about it is you never have to go back there again. 
being your business, strike them off, whatever anybody tells you, it's your business, you choose who you deal, deal with. So you only ever have to go there the once and then obviously not bother again. Now, this is probably relevant for the moment. Um, <laughs> sometimes it rains, maybe you would have noticed that. So when it rains, and this is easier said than done sometimes, but it depends on the amount of catalogs you're working with, try and keep your catalogs separate. Uh, certainly if you've got one you know, uh, in your kit, you would have probably had uh, a basic bag, but also you can get a, a slightly larger bag, which has got a divider in there, which helps keep the wet catalogs from the dry catalogs. But also when you put them back in the car, if you have two boxes, or whatever amount of boxes, one for the wet and one for dry. I remember the first week I lost a load of catalogues and to be honest, I damaged them myself by just sort of lumping all wet and dry ones together. So it can be a good idea to take, you know, either two shoulder bags, one for wet, one for dry, or use the large one, whatever you choose uh, works best for you with, with the dividers. You see, 50 wet catalogues, if you mix them with 50 dry catalogues, you're gonna get 100 wet ones. And I think up the first week I brought a load in, it had been raining, it, it persistently rained for the first couple of weeks when I joined the, the business, and I put them all in one box and left them there, I think, for about a day or two after I picked them up. And believe me, that is not good advice. You know, as soon as you get them back, it's a good idea to, to with the ones that are wet is to get them out of those bags because the problem is if there's any pinholes in there and things like that and they're sitting together they will just soak up the catalogs or soak it soak it up so it's not a good idea and also take a towel a towel a tea towel something like that so you know you could just get rid of the excess water on catalogs when you're going around uh, it's easier said than done sometimes but you know if you certainly if you do have a bigger bag have a tea towel or that type of thing before actually putting it back into your bag. Now, here's some more basics. Let people know who you are and where you live, okay? Uh, and it depends where you work. And if you're working local, I personally think it's a big advantage to have your address on there, okay? If you're working local, if you're working further away, maybe your name and phone number suffices, purely and simply because people do buy from local people. So if you're working within a couple of miles from your house and maybe somebody else comes into the area from say maybe five, 10 miles away and a lot of people do travel around, um, you will have a big advantage. People, for whatever the reason, like to buy from local people. Unless you know them, let them know that you're a local distributor, they may go with somebody else. Now, there are certain things that are inevitable that are gonna happen in your business, and it's wise to let people know, and I'm letting you know certain things that are inevitable that will happen to you, I promise you, at some time. And let's have a look at some of these. It's inevitable you will lose some catalogs, so expect it, okay? You're gonna lose some. And there is a question on this later on, so I'm not gonna go too much into it, but you wanna really expect to lose around five to 10% of your catalogs, something like that. And if you're calling back three times and you do it at the right time of days, it really should be around about the 5% level. If it's much more than that, speak to your sponsor. Like I said, I don't wanna to go too much into that um, because that, you know, you, you're gonna, you can't, if somebody, you know, a dog eats it, there's not much you can do about it. And some people, some kids will play origami with your catalog, like on the picture here. That's gonna happen, you're gonna lose some. So five to 10%, it shouldn't be much more than that. Some dogs will eat them, which I just said, you know, a dog occasionally, I'm sure that's happened to you. If you've been doing it for any period of time, if you put a catalog through the door, sometimes you hear a dog grab it. In fact, sometimes they don't do as much damage as you think. They like the plastic bags more than the catalog. So, uh, but sometimes a dog's gonna eat one. There's not much you can do about that. So expect to have some losses some people will leave it under a brick when it rains i'm not sure if any of you've had that before but leaving it under a brick when it rains is probably one of the most porous substances known to man and they might as well just put a sponge inside the catalog okay because if it's under a brick and it's been there for a couple of days or something like that or certainly a day it can just soak up um soak up the uh, the moisture and some people have no thumbs has anybody had that before where I'm sure you have when all of a sudden you go around to people's houses and you pick up the catalog and maybe it's wet if it's been raining as well and they've cut the top of the bag 
okay have you had that before i know i've had that before and in fact you know so, so i just put it down some people have no thumbs because they obviously can't pull the thing apart and these are little things that are going to frustrate you you think why can't people pull the bag apart why can't and you can get a bit paranoid people are out to get you it's inevitable some dogs are going to eat your catalogs some people are going to cut the top off of your bag these things you know can be sent to test you but i would say please try not to get too frustrated with it just understand it's going to happen occasionally and then you're not going to get too bent out of shape when something like that happens and here's also some inevitable things the good things that nice weather and i'm sure some of you think I'm, I'm lying to you you know since you started cleaning easy there's no such thing as nice weather i'm assured it's around the corner and of course there are going to be uh, some great days when you're out there it's not always raining and of course 99 percent in fact it's probably higher than that 99 percent of people are great but we remember the odd mona when we go around there don't we we don't remember all the great people when we come back the nice people who put your catalog out and order with you as well and of course you can get some great orders as well there's some brilliant orders to be had out there uh, in fact let me just open the chat here for a second let's uh, ask people what their biggest order was in the last month uh just if you want to put it in the text while i'm talking what's been your biggest order single order for one catalog in the last month just to give people an idea 59 pound from jill 62 119 pound from robert brilliant well done robert 102 see there are some good orders as well as those that are 199 ones 195 there's uh, that's absolutely brilliant thank you for that keep, keep going in there um so just going to freeze that again now Thank you for your comments there guys appreciate that okay now you've got a choice when you're doing your catalogs you can either post your catalogs or you can present them and um, both definitely work okay they definitely work and you know there are some pros and cons on both ways of doing it now 100 catalogs letterbox and collected um, which would take about two and a half hours if you deliver uh, post them out and collect them back it's about two and a half hours about 100 pound in orders okay and let's say you had 40 catalogs presented and collected which would take you about the same amount of time to present 40 about two and a half hours you'd still see about 100 pounds worth of orders so they both work the difference is like i said there's pros and cons one you don't need as many catalogs to obviously present 40 so if you're upgrading from break free and you don't wish to invest in more catalogs that's the way we would recommend you go by presenting or if you have more catalogs and you wish to just letterbox that's fine as well one of the differences with presenting it does certainly work better in the evening time though okay and of course like it says depends on the time of day available now rapid start bonuses see even if you do lose a few catalogs okay it's not the end of the world you can get up to an extra 500 extra catalogs free in your first 16 weeks worth up to 320 pounds and these are given to people that regularly retail in a nutshell without going through the full list in your first four weeks um, if you get every 180 pounds worth of orders after you've upgraded from break free or you've started on a business builder you will get another 25 catalogs sent to you completely free from clean easy and like i said it, it does go up the amount as you're getting more into the business and they give you more catalogs but there's certainly a lot of catalogs that you can earn in your early period of the business so retailing for profit part-time you see over a period of time if you're building a customer list and i would uh, or customer base you should all be doing that i would recommend you uh, read your getting started guide okay your global horizons guide that'll give you or can't even remember the title of the, of the document now. Um, basically, yeah, you're you getting started, guide. It's one of the first documents you'll come across in uh, on our uh, support site, globalhorizons.co.uk, and it'll speak there about building a customer base. And certainly within six months, you should start having a good customer base forming. Now, 500 customers should produce you about 1,500 pounds worth of orders every four-week period letterboxed and we do this at least every period and to be honest we do normally double that quite easily now that takes us now because we're just going to people who've ordered from us previously and this is what we normally suggest that you go to an area at least four times and blanket drop it and then after you've done it four times just really stay with the customers who've ordered from you after 
all, all it takes us each week is around seven hours per week, including deliveries. Now, that equates to £555 extra per period. Now, that's £7,000 per year, which isn't bad for seven hours a week. And that's the sort of thing you can get once you've started developing a customer base. That works out at £19.82 per hour just from our retailing alone. Now, what I'd suggest is where possible to start creating that good customer base is aim to either letterbox 400 catalogs per week uh, or hand present 150 per week. So that's 30 per day presented. So even if you're just upgrading from break free and you've only got a limited amount of customer catalogs, maybe 40, you can still go out there and present 30 per day. I'm sure you'd agree with that. And that will really start your customer base moving. Now that should earn you around about £100, probably more per week after costs. So letterboxes, as we said, or at least four times. And you tend to find the first time around about, if you're just letterboxing, about five out of ten will normally order, sorry, five to ten out of a hundred will normally order from you. Now, by the time you've been there at least three to four times, you'll normally have found 20 to 30 out of 100 will have placed an order with you. And it's at that point, after the third or fourth time, that you should really say, well, OK, we're just going to stick, at least for the next 12 months, in this, areas, in this area, looking after our customers. Now, if you're hand presenting, you'll tend to find, obviously it's a slightly different thing, but normally about one in five will order from you the first time that you go around there. Now, some might say, well, if you're getting 19 pound 82 pence per hour, why don't you just do a lot more of that? Because <laughs> that's seven, you know, if you, if you work that out, say, well, if you built up your customer base, you did 40 hours per week, that's 792 pounds per week. Well, we're earning more than that because obviously we, mixing the team building side with it as well which is a completely different training but later on it tends to be at the start you do about 80 percent of your time is on retail and around 20 percent of your, your time is on the team building side however that does need to change over a period of time so it's more 20 percent retail and 80 percent team team building sponsoring and helping uh, others build their business but that happens over a period of time and really, it's a question of saying, do you want 100% of your own efforts or, or maybe 1% of 100 people's efforts? And John Paul Getty said that. It was one of the richest men in the world. And he said, I would much prefer to have 1% of 100 people's efforts than just 100% of my own. And that's really what the team building side is about, if you really do wish to uh, build on both sides of your business. So balancing between retailing and sponsoring certainly does pay more. But at the start, of course, it is important if you're new in the business to concentrate more on the retailing side. And finally, it's really important uh, not to ask people to do anything that you're not prepared to do yourself. I alluded to this at the start, saying that it's really we're in a business of showing people. It's show business, if you like. It's not telling people what to do. It's doing a certain amount of yourself and showing others how to do the same. As we said, there's no place here for... Um, you know, people just directing people. You need to be in the field playing yourself. So that's pretty much it. Happy retailing on that side.